Be not afraid of growing slowly, only of standing still. Chinese proverb. A year and some change ago, Red and I embarked on a journey with nothing but an idea, some bourbon, and a mic between us. What has resulted from that is a podcast that has grown in its infancy into something we both have come to appreciate and enjoy the dedication that goes into producing it. We have changed a considerable amount of how we go about the show, but ultimately, the message remains the same. Feel free to embark on a journey that shows our geek growing pains. Our entire catalog will be available for your listening pleasure. However, this is not an episodic show, and it can be picked up whenever our show titles catch your fancy. Might we suggest episodes 27, 32, or 44 as some of our personal and fan favorites? We want to thank everyone that has offered support, feedback, and encouragement as we have embarked on this adventure that continues to teach us new and better things. Without further fluff or fancy, here's episode 0 and 1, recorded on February 12th, 2019. Hi there, and welcome to a new podcast called Grey Muzzle Geekery, where we as 30-somethings discuss a variety of topics surrounding geek culture. My name is Gabriel Rodriguez, or better known as Dusty Moongazer in the LARP community. And I'm Kristen Stubblefield, Dusty White in that same LARP community. And I guess we here today are doing episode zero, the prologue, or the introduction to the trouble of who you're listening to today, and why, more or less... We are asking for your time as we expound our knowledge of... Geek culture. And geek dumb. Um, as I said, I am a LARPer. I, too, am a female LARPer. Ooh, adding the gender already. I uh, have to. And uh, we are doing this to kind of establish the, the interesting shift of how we, as 30-somethings, got to see geek culture evolve into what it is now. A lot of the people who are filming some of our favorite shows or our favorite movies that are making some of our favorite games are the same geeks that got picked on in the 90s for liking D&D or listening to a uh, variety of music in your case. Correct. Just people that have decided to make a shift in popularity with what they have a passion for. Hobbies and bringing that passion to other people in whatever variety that they want to do. Television, Netflix, movies. Other podcasts. Other podcasts. (laughs) uh, Just anything that you have a passion about and bringing that passion to others. So, uh, in the, our uh, episode zero, I guess we'll start with uh, you, Dusty, of what do you bring to this podcast in particular? What do you bring to this show that says, you know, to your knowledge as a 30-something and, and in terms of, of geek culture? Uh, I have been LARPing consistently. What's LARPing? Uh, live action role play. Oh, there we go. I've been live action role playing for about 14 years, got involved with it right out of high school pretty much, and it really made me become the geek that I am today. My life would not exist without it. The friends and the culture I live in today would not be what it is if I did not find uh, LARP when I first got out of college, uh, high school, sorry. Yeah, I bring a female aspect to that. It has given me the opportunity to find the culture that I really do enjoy, which is most geekdom. I'm a true crime fanatic. I am a podcast fanatic. I listen to lots of different podcasts. Um, Top three off off the bat. My favorite murder. um, Stuff they don't want you to know. And... Man, I don't want to name another t- crime okay. podcast. Well, but. we'll move on then. So, shout out to you, you too, at least. Wink, wink. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, what else do you do in terms of uh, geek culture? So, you're a LARPer, podcast listener. I've done several tabletop games over the course of my geekdom. I have actually ran uh, and been a head of a uh, LARP chapter. I have tried lots of different LARPs. Lots of different types of LARPs, uh, combat-based, magic-based. I play a lot of games, Pokemon, Kingdom Hearts, things like that. Um, so that's kind of what I bring to the table. Fantastic. Uh, as for me, I mean, I am also a LARPer. I will actually be hitting my 20th year in uh, 2020, 
which is hence the gray muzzle. And yeah, I mean the goatee shaved for now, so you can't tell. But yeah, twenty twenty. That's that's like futuristic. That's still not a real year to me. But yeah, I've been I've been LARPing right out of high school as well. As soon as I graduated, I began in uh, two thousand. But before that, I've been in playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. I started in the mid to early nineties, not really knowing a lot of the 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 eighties fantasy stuff. I wasn't introduced into that. I did read. Tolkien when I was younger, but was bored to death on how somebody could describe a tree for four and a half chapters. It wasn't until I got into like R.A. Salvatore and just the old, uh, before it was Wizards of the Coast, all the TSR uh, novels that got me into that culture and was written for a modern era. era. So it was easy to catch on of a more short attention span style. Dove into that, used to role play online on old AOL chat rooms and, you know, for those Raiden fans out there and all those goofy dice games like that. My first LARP, oddly enough, was uh, White Wolf and Vampire in 98. But I didn't go into a foam and boffer-based combat until 2000, which is the one I still play today, or at least a variety of which I still play today. I am more of a PC gamer, a PC master race. I did do play Switch games, uh, which I recently bought. I have been out of the consoles for a little bit. My bread and blood was uh, uh, my bread and butter was Super Nintendo. So just about all the classic Super Nintendo titles from Square Enix, uh, from Final Fantasy to Secret of Mana to all the other fun games that are hiding underneath there is what I grew up and just played the hell out of. Uh, as for other geek geekery type topics, I mean music is where my passion is. I play a little bit myself, play guitar. I've had one for years, but I'm the eternal novice. The, the campfire guy, basically, the one that does the six chords and everybody gets annoyed at. But I've just also listened to a variety of podcasts uh, and decided to do one on something that I don't hear a lot about of a general geek dumb that could focus in, but hey, we'll, we'll bridge that gap when we get to that. So, so yeah. Anyway, we are excited to bring this uh, series to you guys, and hopefully you guys will uh, hit us back up through uh, email and other stuff once we get that established. Obviously, this is episode zero, so I will have that information later once it gets all published, and I look forward to episode one where we kick this thing off legitimately. I am seriously looking forward to it. It should be a good time. We're going to have to come up with a closing line by then, but for now, I am... Well, I guess Dusty Moongazer, but I'll just go by Red Rep Scallion for here. And I am Dusty White. And we'll see you all later. Hi there, and welcome to Great Muscle Geekery. I am your host, Dusty Red, and with me as always... I am Dusty White. And so we're going to start off with today's headline news. Beep, 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 beep. So, first off, we have a uh, PC game that's been kind of rampaging all through... Well, it's actually PC in the sense of it's multi-console or multi-platform, cross-platform. It's not fully cross-platform yet, but Apex Legends uh, came out on February 5th, 2019. It's been already as crushed Fortnite's download. Oh, really? It has beaten Fortnite already. Within the first week, it has already some million downloads. And, yeah, it's I played a little bit of it so far, and I could already feel it start to grab hold of my ankles and pull me down. Uh, I have a feeling that this weekend is going to be little else than playing freaking Apex Legends. You, you sure about that? I'm mostly sure. Okay. Also this week, Umbrella Academy, a popular comic book series by the same name, similar to X-Men, releases on Netflix. Also, popular masked singer judge, popular masked singer judge Netflix special Ken Jong, you complete me ho. That, that also comes out. Oh, Ken Jong. Okay, I thought you were saying Kim Jong, and I'm like, no. the North Korean dictator's got a Netflix yeah, show. Yeah, didn't you know? Hell yeah. Dennis Rodman hooked him up with oh, Netflix nice. producers. Going back to uh, board games, we actually have Sushi Roll. If anybody's ever played Sushi Go, the card game, they actually have Sushi Roll coming out. It's a play on dice. Haha, <laughs> dice name. But that should be out in spring of 2019. It hasn't been an official release yet. But speaking of official releases... 
Oh, as we patiently, patiently wait for soon to be released, hopefully, Amazon Prime Good Omens. I cannot wait for that. Anyway, that is this week's news. Let's immediately go right into Good Omens. Have you read the book? Absolutely. And what do you think? Uh... I did not find Good Omens until later into my literary career. Uh, liter- it's what, 30 years now? Uh, 20 years? Yeah. We'd have to look that up. Oh, but something out. something there. I found it because I f- started to fall in love with Neil Gaiman. Um, I know that isn't where you found it, being a Pratchett fan. I am a diehard, loyal Pratchett fan and have, again... He's been starting since the 70s, or he's been writing since the 70s. I didn't find him until early 2000s, but once... So far into the Discworld series. It was already... Point. Well, I found just the Discworld through um, one of my ex-girlfriend's fathers introduced me to the book, uh, to the series, gave me the first book, and that night I burnt through more than half of the book, and then just consumed the series for the next several years. And there's like 67 books or something like that from that this particular series. I was led on to Good Omens from my old uh, roommate who was a huge Neil Gaiman fan. And he back-to-back got me hooked on both Good Omens and Neverwhere. And I, as a diehard, very Alice in Wonderland fan, Neverwhere, hit that chord with me, and I was left wanting for more, and he gave me good omens, and a lot like Dustin here, we went into good omens, and I devoured it. I used to ride the train to work, and would just read books upon books upon books, Um, So yeah, Good Omens, I've been looking forward to. It's going to co-star one of my personal favorites as uh, David Tennant. Yes, I like Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. I have that bumper sticker on your car, if I'm not mistaken. I do. My other car is a TARDIS. Uh, And my car and my coat are very similar TARDIS blue. You have a Um, scarf as well, actually. I do. Imagine that. I am looking forward to sitting down and literally devouring that season as soon as it comes out. Um, peeking real quick. So the book came out May 1st, 1990. Okay. So, I was five. Uh, no, four. Soon uh, to be five. Yeah, yeah, I was eight. So that gives you an idea. I was born in 82. I was born in 85. So depending on your definition of what a gray muzzle is. But again, we're, we're in our 30s and we've definitely seen the, uh, the what was what we were talking about earlier of, I remember having, like, playing outside and having to be home before the streetlights came on. But... Ended up going to high school with a pager and then a cell phone and just, like, saw the dawn of technology just, like, make leaps and bounds in that regard. So, um, but yeah, Good Omens, it's, we'll see, they're still dragging their feet on it. Have you seen any of the BBC releases of, like, Terry Pratchett stuff? I remember roughly watching, is it Hogfather that is Terry Probably. Pratchett? There's a couple that released, but yeah, Hogfather is Terry Pratchett. I am not... Versus my Terry Pratchett. That's right. I I picked up I think one of the Discworlds as one of my friends is also as Dustin is is a big Terry Pratchett fan and devours every book that had ever came out. Her love of sea turtles is vast and wide. I know exactly what we're talking about. It took me a second. I'm like, wait a second. Oh, I know. I, that is a mutual friend, in fact. Yes. And she does the love the great attune. And she and she's an English teacher, so she she's my go to of hey, is this worth reading? Um, especially when it comes to series. Uh, but she is a big tra- uh, uh, Pratchett fan as well, and I just couldn't get into it. I I don't know if maybe I just couldn't identify with the characters or maybe it's a lot like netflix shows you got to start on season two uh, i just Pratchett, can't get Pratchett's, into it Pratchett's particularly weird because the discworld series is done in sections in a sense of the world is a is like a continuity of everything is going on but depending where it's almost like picking a country like okay it's 1970 do you want to read about United States in the 1970s? Do you want to read about Russia in the 1970s? Do you want to read about Japan in the 1970s? This world has that same feeling of... So I'm while, picking college thesis like Not college thesis. Classes. You're, no, you're picking, like, you're picking particular stories. Like for me, I've always gravitated towards the Night Watch and the City Watch, 
which all happens while all this other stuff is going on with Rincewind, who is the most powerful failed mage. You have all of, like, this whole cavalcade of characters, but they're sectioned off in their own stories, in their own. So while character A is going on his rampage through the world and doing things, characters B and C are in another part of the world doing a thing. So you'll have 67 books that take place in a span of 30 years. Because it's less than 30 years, actually, because it's all just things happening. in the world is built, but the players in it get their own book. So it's you, it's less of a series. Interesting. It's it less... seems like maybe that might be where Harry Potter world, it, it, like Harry Potter's theories and well, J.K. It, Rowling is going. If, if you put, if you put, that. if you put, the best way to look at it would be like if Fantastic Beasts took place at the same time as Harry Potter, Harry like Potter stuff, the original series. So now you have Harry Potter in England doing his thing at Hogwarts, and then everything happening in. America. In America, happening simultaneously. So you could switch between. Now imagine both of those books being its own series. It still falls under Pottermore or the Harry Potter series, but it's different sections at the same time. Got it. That's how Project works. I gravitated towards Night Watch because I grew up in a military family and a, uh, a police family. And so that section of it, I just glommed onto with all the police stuff and. The, the City Watch stuff and a lot of inside jokes on how cops act and coppers think and stuff. I, I see my dad and I see my uncle and that stuff. So it's really, really funny to me. Um, some people prefer stuff like the uh, the witches, which are just deep end crazy grandma, which is a lot of fun. So it just really depends on which way you want to look and which way you want to go with the books really helps in that regard. So uh, we could definitely get you into some sort of uh, some sort of Pratchett theme. But again, it really depends what you want to do. I know a lot of people like the Wee Free Men, which are several inches tall, and they're Scottish, and they curse, and they fight, and they, they're... You so would... adult little borrowers. Yeah, actually, more or less. Okay. So. But yeah, so Pratchett was my, my big love. I actually have, before he passed away, I actually have two autographed books. Uh, my for my birthday, my mother actually wrote in a letter to a bookshop owner in England to when he uh, when Pratchett was doing one of his last tours, book signing tours, asked the bookshop owner to hold a copy and have it signed and ship it back to the states. Further proof of it is even on the where it shows like the price for the book, where it's like how you pay for it. Right, it's in pounds in Canadian. It's not an American, American currency. Dollar. It's not uh, American no U.S. Dollar. dollars here. No U.S. Dollar. I mean, that's tanking anyway, but that's a whole... <laughs> we're not a political show. <laughs> but hey, get another glass of bourbon in me and we'll become a political <laughs> show real quick. But yeah, so it, it's a very, very... Neat, I got that. Um, was his last... One of his last ones was Rising Steam, which is another character. Actually, yeah, that's a character I think you might like. Moist Van Lip, uh, Von Lipwick. I'm already out. That's, that's why his name horrible is... horrible name. That's why his name is Moist. Nobody yeah. likes that word. That's why his name is that. But uh, but yeah, it's a signed copy. It's got the stamp on there. Sir P- Terry Pratchett, he was knighted. Um, and then, unfor- well, I don't want to say unfortunately, because he was suffering through dementia. And then his Twitter blew up. You want to talk about true geekdom here. His Twitter blew up as if death, which he is known for doing in all caps. So when he when he is writing as death, the character death, he does his... In all caps. So the book right. reads in capitalization font. His Twitter was in caps as if he was speaking to himself. And then the next day, he was dead, surrounded by family. That said, it's also known he was uh, a proponent for um, assisted suicide. Absolutely. And yeah, nobody is 100% sure on how he went to this day. Oh, but could you imagine being that type of brain or that intellectual type of person and and know what you're going to go through and not only possibly because it does run in families already have experienced it with somebody else in his family and then having to know that that is the path that you were destined to to lead and have a strong enough conviction to be like this is not for me i for one personally applaud him Oh, I, well, we, I think you and I also are on the same boat of, like, when we are incapable of wiping our own asses, we're done. Yeah. Like, I learned a long time ago, you do not need a parachute to go skydiving. You need a parachute to go skydiving twice. 
So right. I, I I personally believe that first first series of bodily functions start going, <laughs> it, it's time to go. It is I'm yeah not not having it. I had a con- was it I can't remember who I had a conversation. No, I had a conversation with somebody at work that was asking me about like during a zombie apocalypse what I would do. <laughs> like my my as a day job, I'm gonna I'm gonna air quote it. You can't see on a podcast an electrician. Like I, I yeah, but. They're like, so you'd be like valuable in in, in, a, in a zombie apocalypse. I have told you that. You told me that, but somebody at work also suggested I'd be valuable in a zombie apocalypse, and I reminded them that I am built for comfort. I like having the internet. I like having a TV and lights. I have a magic box in my kitchen that, when I open the door, has food. You realize though that this is coming from somebody that has, in twenty years, many weekends spent quote unquote quote roughing it as a medieval type character fighting for food fighting for starvation thieving stealing getting around to survive in the woods yeah and then sunday morning i go to a restaurant and get fish and apples and coffee Ooh, excuse me and coffee all all the coffee ever no what is going to happen to me in a zombie apocalypse i'm a fucking zombie that's what happens to me in the zombie apocalypse. Like, well, I'm taking your ass out first because you're gonna be one of those motherfucking fast zombies. No, I'm not having it. Uh, actually, I might be. If I'm lucky, I might be a mini boss. Because if the zombie apocalypse happens, I'm planning on going for a long drive in my garage. And should something happen, they open up said garage, and maybe I'm driving around as a zombie. I don't know how scary a zombie and a Kia Soul is, but. That's me. Here, here's here's a scenario for you. What if with you don't become a mini boss? What if you become that zombie? We harness you, and then you become the battery. How are you gonna harness me? I don't know. Treadmill. I'll make you the electricity. You're gonna be the battery. Well, now we go into uh, this is already left field. What kind of zombies are we talking about here? Are we talking about zombies that are like magically created, virus created? Are they like? I don't know. Well, no, You're I already trapped in a garage somewhere, so I'll just throw a treadmill in there, figure out how to hook it up, yeah, and but make we live, a battery for my new house. But we live in the Midwest, therefore, if it's February, am I a frozen zombie and that's it? Like, I'm just a zombie sickle? If we're talking this winter, yes. <laughs> well, I, I think everything was a zombie sickle. Well, we hit the negative. Well, it wasn't as bad as it has been, but we did hit, like, negative stupids. For you Minnesota people who want to wave your, it was colder here, you are just South Canada. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, no, no zombie. I, 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 I am built for comfort. I am not made to survive in a, oh, you could do this and you could... Su-. No, I do. I have zero interest in trying to survive with cuts and you bruises. You are a whiny and scra- bitch when you're cold. I am. Oh, it's cold. Uh, cold to me is under 70. Yeah. Like, I am skinny and small and I am not... No, I am made for comfort. I am a And why haven't of- you moved south again? Because scorpions. Why scorpion? Because I have a firm belief that anything that attacks with its ass is just unacceptable. Scorpions, bees, wasps, wasps spiders. spiders. It's technically spiders. They bite, but they weave webs with their butt. And anybody that's ever walked into a really thick web either suddenly learns like jujitsu, <laughs> or if your mouth was open, knows what a spider butt tastes like. And horses. Horses attack with their... Yeah, they bite. Okay, do you ever get kicked by a horse? Like, I have a friend. His mom has a, like, impression on her chest from when she was a little girl. Decided to get behind the horse and got sent back 20 feet because it kicked her out. No. Any attacks with your ass is rude. Uh, nah, I'm, I'm not moving south. I am okay here with climate control and with warranties. And, no, I'm good. And, I'm good. and short treks in the cold. And I could play a video game with 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 cold stuff like I like recently I don't know what you've been up to what what I, I've been playing Legend of Zelda Breath of Seattle lately just because uh, yes it's Breath of Seattle because it's cold it's rainy and everybody's talking about shit that happened a hundred years ago I I'm okay with sitting down and playing a video game but that is between Apex Legends and Breath of the Wild which I'm a little behind on but been playing the hell out of that. That has been my winter. Stay warm and play Zelda. What have you been doing this winter? Um, I actually do kind of revert in the winter to 
my console playing games. Um, I have been patiently waiting, like most of the children of the age of Kingdom Hearts has been. Oh, Kingdom Hearts. The most 13 convoluted, years. The most convoluted story ever. Oh, I, 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 and I am not a complete 100% convert. I have not played all the games. I will be 100% honest. I played the first one when it first came out. I dabbled in the second one, but as soon as they started going to like card base, turn base, all oh, on the geez. like the the handheld stuff, I was out. I didn't have any desire to play those. I've watched a lot of you plays on it and stuff oh, like that. Play, yeah. yeah, let's plays. Um, and then now it's come down to Kingdom Hearts 3 has finally released. I've seen some play of it. Um, I love um, Game Theory and MatPat playing. Oh, it. Game Theory. I really like enjoying the watching the art. It is a masterfully done, beautifully artistic game being played. I like the interweaving stories like everybody talks about Marvel and Disney and all this interplay. Kingdom Hearts was doing it first. Um, between Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, Disney, uh, all that interplay of characters, it is a great general story building game and I really enjoy watching well, it. Ja- Japanese style stories are different too. Right. Like we look at you, it, it aptly compared to like Marvel and such that uses tropes. Why well, I, I, it's well, hard to call it, it's, I mean well, yes. It's hard to call it tropes though because we look at it as tropes when it's our own culture calling something that of our own culture a trope when I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see if like the Japanese or other like Maybe in Europe or other countries, look at American and Marvel comics and go, "Holy crap!" Or DC, but I mean, D- DC and Marvel, like one is good at TV shows, one is good at movies. It's I could I, I could see that. I am somewhat of a comic book fan. <clears throat> I got into comic. I, I guess I even shouldn't even say comic books to begin with. I found comic books later on. Well, since we're since we're in episode one and we're still learning about our uh, our lovely hosts here, what is your favorite comic book character? Oh gosh, um, honestly. And be careful because you're going to make some enemies really quick. Oh, I quick. know. We're going to lose viewers before we even have them. Um, I man, put me on the spot. You go first. Because I know you have an answer. Oh, I, I, well, my as my mom told me growing up, you have an answer for everything, don't you? Um, it wasn't endearing. I want to say Wolverine. I liked Wolverine growing up, and I realized he, he was like the king of the Edge Lords of just look at me, I'm edgy, uh, Bob. I'm gonna punch you in the face. I and I tried to stray away, but the movie Logan, okay, really drew me back in. Huge jacked man God, is still so really good. Not rewatchable. You watch it once. Logan. And yeah, I can only. I've only seen it Spoiler once. But it no, was it's great. I think it's rewatchable only for. I, hmm, I think it's rewatchable only because then you'll be able to pick up some of the subtle clues that are hidden in the movie. I think that's the one thing that we forget is like when they write this, they already know the ending, so they can throw clues in the in in the movie right. as it's happening. We as viewers. Unless we're really, really, really in tune or anticipating anticipating what's going on. Because even as a diehard fan, we have seen time and time again that adaptations for movies and whatnot aren't going to be the same as their predecessor, be it a book or a graphic novel or whatever else. So they will take a little bit of liberty here or there to kind of throw us off the, off the trail. But they know the end. They know what's going on. So we are trying to figure out what's going on. We're still kind of for a ride, so we don't want to make too many assumptions. Once you see it, you know the end of it, you can then rewatch it and make some of those assumptions or at least put pieces together of, oh, that makes sense why he's here. Or, oh, especially when you have some movies, Tarantino's famous for it, that puts them out of chronological order. Oh, yeah. That it makes sense to watch it again later to go, Oh, oh, I totally miss that. Or oh, that totally makes sense. It's the rewatchability of it. And some and some games have been doing that too, where they'll put you in positions of like, oh, this happens, this happens, and you look and why am I like this? Like, oh, this happened before, or our timeline is fluid, or it's it's time is a linear concept is what our friends was is not a linear concept. Says the guy who's been playing Z- Zelda and Link. I started falling <laughs> down that rabbit hole and actually rewatching the chronological tales of how Zelda kind of goes from what is actually the original Zelda and what isn't 
Zelda and like there may be a full episode on what is ze- like Zelda Zero to Zelda Now because even then the timeline forks between Adult Link, Child Link, and if Link wins, if Link didn't win, all spidering out into just that's that's a rabbit hole. I guess. So, so, so go so comic here, comic. Okay, here. so I'll go at it this way. I know what I don't like is comic book heroes. I do not like... Superman. uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Too perfect. I hate Superman. I hate... uh, But but my ability to dislike a lot of just characters in general come from this ability of Superman can do no wrong. Superman always has an answer for everything. He's never really challenged. He's never grows as a character. I disagree. Well, I disagree with the he doesn't... Or I agree with the he doesn't grow as a character... The challenge, though, is you don't attack Superman. You you distract Superman and do your actual deed. Okay. All right. Like, Superman is such a goody-goody, you just try to bomb a building or crash a plane or kidnap somebody and have your henchman do that miles away and let Superman go deal with that. While, again, Lex Luthor is a prime example... He does and goes become his master plan of, what, in some of the, the universes he becomes president. Right. That's how you win. Like, he basically becomes a dictator. I told you I'm not getting political, though, so be careful. Because <laughs> we already have dic- we already have Superman wig and all, like, or uh, Lex Luthor wig and all, like, dealing with stuff. But, um, yeah, it, it becomes a case of you distract Superman. But, yes, I agree. I think characters that have all of the super... So what do you think of, like, Batman, then? Batman has vulnerability. Batman has things that he, get, <laughs> like... That you can push on him, but does he still become a Mary Sue when like he's able to just oh, escape from? He happens down the Mary Sue, like, but like does he just like reach into his utility belt and he has the answer? Well, money is the answer to everything, don't you know? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, like yeah, you can't you can't <laughs> buy happiness, but you sure as hell can rent it for a hundred years. So uh, right. Um, no, I think I, going back from my childhood, I, like I said, I came upon, uh, came upon geekdom way later to be classified as geekdom, sure. but I was always interested in weirder things. Like I, I remember being way too young to be watching it, but Aeon Flux. Oh, before, MTV. Absolutely. When MTV actually had like music videos and weird fucking Comics, cartoons. Like, yeah. and, and, the Max, uh, the, the, yeah, the absolutely. head. I came about stronger female characters that way. Rogue was always... A, I grew up watching X-Men sure. um, on Fox. Uh, old, I can, old school. I, everybody, else, everybody else can hear the theme song in their oh, head right absolutely. now. You can hear the theme You're song. welcome for that earworm. <laughs> but I grew up watching shows like that. And coming from a household with an older brother, I was more in I was more uh introduced to that kind of stuff through television shows and animation and I didn't find comic books until I was way uh way older sure. um I interestingly enough am kind of involved in dealing or reading currently reading through Saga and Saga is a it's a very Romeo Juliet type okay. of comic book, but it's interstellar and it's it takes a lot for me to actually read it because I'm not a space person. It took somebody pinning me down to make me watch Firefly forever ago. Okay. But I'm not a space person. Just I don't, don't get care space. For space. I don't get space. Even though I I grew up watching Star Wars, that was probably the only geek thing that I grew oh, up I doing because my wanna... dad was a big Star so Wars. So do we have to deal with the Star Trek versus Star Wars right out the gate too? Uh didn't watch Star Trek. I've watched I watched a lot either. of Star Wars. We're gonna well, we just lost half of viewers, <laughs> uh, listeners there too. We don't have viewers who are on a podcast. <laughs> I I like I like Star Trek. I've seen some Star Trek and never really got heavily into it just because that is where I lose my geek cred, so to speak. I, I don't watch much TV. Um, I'm a reader and a gamer first. That's why I'm the pop culture person. That's why I have you on here. <laughs> Not just for your looks that nobody can see, but the fact that you are more into the pop culture that way. Like I love, I'm, I'm big on music. I'm big on, especially 90s music. Still hate Nirvana, though. I'm going to establish that right out the you gate. Didn't, you didn't even hesitate. Not even hesitate. Hate Nirvana. But... Love nineties music and just love music in general, eighties, nineties, two thousands, even the modern stuff now. But 
uh, I just never got a chance to sit down and watch a TV show. So Star Wars only won it out for me because it's two hours and I'm done. Right. Like the entirety of, of Star Wars. All of Star Wars you could pretty much wrap up in 12 hours. You can't, right now. You, as of today. As of today, yeah. But, <laughs> but try to wrap up all of Star Trek and all of the variations of Star Trek and stuff. That said, I have a feeling that if I hunker down, I would probably enjoy Star Trek more just because I do, maybe because I am getting older, it would be nice to see that kind of future and to see, to see intelligence not belittled, to see um, curiosity and diversity and other such concepts, which was from the 70s and even beforehand, celebrated. Hey, you're smart. You're, you're the captain, not because you're dashing good looks or a ladies' man or, I mean... Han Solo is a, a liar and a cheat, and he shot first. Han Solo shot first. <laughs> you go into intelligence and curiosity and... Good kinda, traits are being encouraged mm, and celebrated than bad traits of, well, he's a captain because he's got money, or he's a captain because of this. He's physically stronger right. or whatever else. Yeah, I, I would... I would definitely take the word of the, uh, of course, now you go into Captain Picard or, you know, but, but I'm not going to go to Picard, but I'm not going that route. I, I, I personally, although William Shatner will probably never die because I think he's like 80 something now. Uh, yeah. But like I'm that. still, I, I, yeah, I, we're both like trying to look up Shatner's age. But yeah, I so that's why I have you for more of the TV stuff and the TV shows type stuff because you... Do you you are a pinnacle? Binger. I have killed more brain cells watching thirty minute television shows and longer than you have. Let's just call it spade a spade here. No, I, I, I thought you hate that saying too. That's awesome. <laughs> well, we are at the thirty minute mark. Do we want to? Oh, we're we looking up the age. Where's he at? He is currently as of February twelfth, twenty nineteen. Seven years old. He is eighty seven years old. I mean, we've got Betty White. She's kicking up there, too. Don't jinx it. <laughs> All right, then. So I guess that is it from uh, us at uh, Gray Muzzle Geekery. I am Gabriel or Dusty Red. I am Dusty White. And uh, we bid you adieu. Thank you once again for listening to Gray Muzzle Geekery with Dusty Red and Dusty White. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Gray Muzzle Geek or to send us questions and comments at graymuzzlegeekery at gmail.com.